Hi YouTube friends, I'm on the first canoe trip of uh, the season. It's uh, the long holiday weekend here in Ontario. Third weekend of May. And uh, I just put into a front country lake here. Although it's, it's, uh, it's already looking quite remote. No cabins at all except uh, where the access is off the highway. But I'm going down there. Going to portage in one or two lakes and get into backcountry. Short trip, only three days. That's all I could muster from work. Portage is supposed to be somewhere down there. Leaves are still on their way out. Thunderstorms are brewing. Weather reports calling for thunderstorms this afternoon and rain all night. I'm looking for the portage. Quite windy out on the lake. Thunderstorm is brewing. This is down in the little bay. Should be a blazed tree somewhere. I was guessing it was down here. I may have guessed wrong. Although, that sort of looks like a trail right there. I don't see a blaze on a tree, but let's check it out. This is indeed the Portage Trail. See saw cuts there. No blaze, which is traditional, which is odd to be missing on this trail, but it is the trail. I'm gonna have to take, that's my gear there. This blue barrel here, that's my camera case. Blue barrel is for food and other stuff. Cause lots of bears around here. Anyways, I'm gonna take a pack and get my saw out because uh, this is not a park it's not maintained by park staff this is crown land northwestern ontario and there's bound to be some blowdown along it so uh, i'll go through and uh, take some of those out on my way by Better get going too. It's gonna start raining pretty hard, pretty fast if I don't get my campsite set up in time, get my wood supply in. That was a great, well-maintained trail. I didn't have time to film it because I'm really moving quick here because uh, the rain is coming in. Just wanna do a shout out to uh, Phil Cotton and the Wabakimi Project for um, uh, maintaining these trails they came through a few years ago and uh, 
and uh, cut this out. There's uh, plenty of blow down there that they removed. So thanks again, uh, Phil and the Wabakimi Project. So here I am. I have to make a decision whether this is my destination lake or paddle across this one and do a 600 meter portage. Uh, sky is looking ugly. I don't know what to do. We'll see when I get out there. Big blowdown event. We get a lot of those here. Hopefully that's not what the campsite I'm heading for looks like. Well I found this campsite. It's a pretty nice place. Uh, barely got the tent set up and tarp half set up when it started pouring rain and uh, it's going to rain again. But the, uh, the first storm came through and so we're between storms and it's that calm be between the storms. Canoe is pulled up there and tied down. It's very important in this country to tie your boat down because uh, it can get lifted up and tossed into the water uh, with strong winds and downbursts and small tornadoes and uh, well really it's the downbursts associated with these thunderstorms that can just toss a boat, uh, wrap it around a tree or toss it in the water. I'll show you my camp setup. Oh, by the way, that's my Purcell trench grill. Um, but I think I'm going to cook with uh, my little bug junior stove under the tarp here because it's just going to be one rainstorm after the other. So I got on a, a rock dome covered in moss there. It should drain fairly well starting to collect some wood. I gotta make it really small to fit the stick stove. That's the downside of stick stoves is uh, you gotta process the wood a lot and uh, all the twigs got soaking wet before I could collect them. So uh, I'll see what I can do. It's a mountain hardware hammerhead two-man. All the hatches are battened down. Had that for a couple canoe trips so far. It served me pretty well. This forest is boreal forest. This particular area is uh, black spruce dominant with feather moss and some jack pine in here as well. Almost no birch. I saw some way back in the bush there. I'll have to go back there and see if I can find some birch bark flakes on the ground. This is an old stand too. It's a bit scary in old stands. Uh, there's a big jack pine there. Uh, these trees are probably rotten in the middle. And they snap and blow down. I'll show you one. Oh, they, uh, the flies in front there are black flies. They're out. It's mid-May. I'm wearing bug dope. So here's an example of blowdown. You don't want to be underneath that if uh, just harvesting some branches there for the stick stove. You don't want to be underneath that when they come down. This one uh, snapped on its roots, but um, they can also snap in, in rotten areas anywhere on the stem and come down on you. Well, time to get to work on the wood supply. Second round of rain is happening here. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up. Uh, if you hear a trilling sound, all oh, the rain's going to dampen it out. The uh, toads are are in full call right now. They're the last of the amphibians here to call, and uh, they have a beautiful. Um, continuous trilling call, but the rain is probably, uh, and my voice is probably dampening that out. Oh, it's starting to really come down now. 
That's my Little Bug Junior stove, stick stove. And that's chicken and rice and dried mushrooms and dried onions and olive oil and garlic. I added a, a coffee can, a large coffee can bottom because Little Bug Junior doesn't have a bottom. And I find the bottom uh, is very convenient for uh, just this situation which is under a tarp in the pouring rain. Uh, stick stoves take a while to learn how to use because they flare up and then they go down, flare up and then they go down. And I've got softwood here full of resin so it's not like hardwood that burns very even. It was quite, quite a downpour and the thunder is still going and it's still raining and it's forecast to rain all night. So these little stick stoves are can be handy although there's a lot of prep involved and it's not easy to snap all those twigs especially twigs that are as big as your thumb they, they bend and they don't break. I've been uh, tapping them there was these little these sawn logs at this campsite which is great so I've been nicking the branches so I could snap them with my fingers which makes them easier to feed in. Nice thing about the little bug junior is that it's got a lot of space where you can feed sticks in. There's space all around and that's because the pot supports uh, push the pot up from the from the rim. Yeah, it's supposed to rain all night and uh, could rain all day tomorrow. Not good for the fishing opportunities. I don't know if the mic can pick that up, but that's there's some spring peepers still calling. And behind that, which the mic probably can't pick up, is the trilling of the toads. I can't imagine living without a tarp. And while I'm talking about gear, this is a Cook Custom Sewing Tarp. This is a 10 by 10 sill nylon. Used it for many years, it's good.